This is video number six now from digital-university.org where we're discussing various topics in quantum mechanics. In this video we want to consider some of the uh, more special properties that Hermitian operators possess, uh, specifically uh, their eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenfunctions. So here Let's say that we have a Hermitian operator and it operates on a particular cat vector and instead of giving us a new type of cat vector all we end up with is some constant times the original cat vector. Now these special circumstances where you have an operator operating on something and they go through the whole business regardless of what type of operator it is and all you end up with is just some multiple of this particular function or vector whatever it is those are called the eigenfunctions of that particular operator and these constants that this ends up being multiplied by those are the eigenvalues. One property that Hermitian operators have even though their components uh, can be complex numbers, their eigenvalues are always real numbers. And that's pretty simple to demonstrate. If we have this, this has to be a real number now. That's the fundamental definition of a Hermitian operator. We discussed that in the previous video. But this of course, this part here is just lambda a times. So we can rewrite this. This is just some number, so we can take it to the outside. And now what we have is this. So here we have a, and this is being multiplied by its complex conjugate. So this has to be a real number. This is a real number. Therefore, this must be a real number. So all the eigenvalues of our mission operator are real numbers. And that's why um, Hermitian operators correspond to the observables in quantum mechanics. Observables being such things as the angular momentum. That's something we can measure. Or the spin of a particle or the position of a particle, or the energy. Those are all things that we can measure. Those are observables. And of course, when we measure them, they have a real number. They don't have a complex number. And it turns out now that the eigenvalues of a Hermitian operator are those things, then, that we can actually measure. So we say that in quantum mechanics, the Hermitian operators really are the observables. So here we see, then, that the eigenvalues of her mission operator indeed are real numbers. Now it turns out that their eigenvectors or their eigenfunctions, those too have a special property. And to demonstrate that, let's say that we have our same Hermitian operator, and let's say it operates now on a different cat vector. but that this cat vector or this function here is also an eigenvector slash eigenfunction of this Hermitian operator. So that this is equal to just some constant times the cat vector b. Okay, now let's consider this. Suppose we construct this. What would this equal to? Well here we're taking the emission operator operating on A, then whenever that comes out to be equal to, we take the inner product of that with B. Well, this is just this. So this would just equal, we can take this to the outside, and we have this, and then we'll have this.
Okay, what happens if we do it the other way around? We have it like this. Now this, operating on b, is just this constant times the cap vector b. So you can take this number outside. And remember, these are real numbers now. These are not complex numbers. And what we're going to have is this. Like this. Now, these are complex conjugates of each other. So that means that these are complex conjugates of each other. So we have and we have this these are complex conjugates of each other. So that means if I take the complex conjugate of this it just gives me this. If I have a plus ib its complex conjugate of course is a minus ib. Now if I take the complex conjugate of this it just gives me that. Same thing here. So, let's see what the consequences of this are. Or, not to get too fancy, we can take the complex conjugate of both sides if we want to. And I would have this would equal this, but that just takes us right back to this. So we could have it that way if we wanted to as well. Well let's see, what is this equal to? This is equal to this. So we have this, which is this, what is that equal to? That is equal to the complex value, the complex conjugate of this, or it's the complex conjugate of this. And this Now, just to remind ourselves, we have this times this. And we want to take the complex conjugate of this expression. Well, if you have two complex numbers multiplied together, then its complex conjugate of this product is just z1 times z2, the complex conjugate of each one. So for this it would be the complex conjugate of this times the complex conjugate of this. But the eigenvalues themselves are real numbers. So the complex conjugate of this is just lambda a. Because lamb these lambdas are real numbers, these eigenvalues. So what's the complex conjugate of this? That would be this. So what we have is this is equal to this. So let's bring this over to this side of the equation. And what we have is lambda b minus lambda a times this inner product equals zero. Now how can that be? Well, if these two eigenvalues are equal, that would make it zero. But let's go back 
to here. And let's do this now for cases where these are distinct eigenvalues. Lambda A does not equal lambda B. So if these are not equal to each other, this is not zero, therefore this has to be zero. So what that means then, if this inner product is zero, that means that these are orthogonal to each other. So for Hermitian matrices, they have the special properties where their eigenvalues are real and their corresponding eigenfunctions or eigenvectors. I'll probably intermix the two as we're discussing here, although in quantum mechanics we're usually dealing with complex functions, not complex vectors, but they play analogous roles here. But that means then that the complex eigenvectors or eigenfunctions are orthogonal to one another. Now, if you watch the videos um, in the linear algebra series, we talk about matrices and eigenfunctions and eigenvalues. If you have a matrix and you determine what its eigenfunctions are, if those eigenfunctions come from distinct eigenvalues, they're linearly independent. For Hermitian matrices, that, that holds true also, plus we have the special relationship. Not only are they linearly independent, but they are orthogonal to one another. And what we can do is, um, for a particular cat or particular function, we can make them um, unit, but make them of unit value, just like we do for a vector. You can take a vector, divide it by its magnitude, and you have a unit vector. You can do the same thing then for eigenfunctions and eigenvectors. You can make them um, of a unit in magnitude, which means then that for a Hermitian operator, its corresponding eigenvectors or eigenfunctions can be made orthonormal to one another, so they can form an orthonormal basis. And that's another very, that's a very important property of the Hermitian operators. So for Hermitian operators, and again we're really harping on this because it's, it's so critical, um, to the different tenets of quantum mechanics. For Hermitian operators, the eigenvalues are real. Those are real numbers and the corresponding eigenvectors slash eigenfunctions orthogonal or because they're orthogonal we can actually make them orthonormal. Now let's just make a little bit of room. Remember during the um, video number one we talked about a vector v and we said let's say then that there's a particular set of basis vectors b when I read as a cat and we said these basis vectors are orthonormal meaning that here there could be a whole series of them And this gets expanded in terms of these different basis vectors. We cover that during the first video. But what we said during the first video, these are orthonormal, meaning that when you take the inner product, of two of them, if it's the same one, so that i equals j, it equals one. If i does not equal j, it equals zero. The inner product is always zero when they're orthogonal, plus they're of unit magnitude and length, we can think of it like that, so that when you have the same one, the inner product of bi with bi, you get one. And these eigen 
vectors or eigenfunctions of Hermitian matrix, they're orthogonal, we can make them of unit length and magnitude, so therefore we can make an orthonormal set from these different types of eigenfunctions or eigenvectors that we get with these Hermitian operators. So again, that's a very important property of them, so I want to take some time to try to go over it thoroughly. What we'll do in the next video is we'll try to give a demonstration of what is meant by an orthonormal function. We've just been kind of alluding to it here in the general sense. Come back, we don't have time to do it in this video, come back, join us in the next video, and we'll give an example of what an orthonormal function might look like. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll continue our discussion.